Today on the Zappy Code Show, a new survey shows that 58% of tech employees feel imposter syndrome at work. Am I really qualified to be doing this show? We'll be taking a look at the interplanetary file system. Yes, you can still go grab that PDF over on Uranus. I'll be sharing my favorite find from Product Hunt over the last week. Lady Gaga's got a bizarre tweet from 2012 that has some excellent memes. I'm sharing my favorite too. And finally, a tutorial from me teaching you how to add HTTPS to your website for free. Welcome to the most interesting programming show on the internet. Welcome to the Zappy Code Show. Let's go ahead and kick things off by talking about imposter syndrome. Now, what is imposter syndrome? It's basically the feeling that you don't deserve to be where you're at right now. Typically in the programming world, it's that you're in some sort of job and you just think, I don't know enough to be here. I can't be on this team building this thing. Like, I don't have the qualifications for this. How did I get hired for this job? This basically describes every job that I had for about the first four years uh, as a programmer. And now for me as an instructor, I still feel this all the time. So where did this come from? Blind, a company which as far as I understand is like a new glass door, uh, put out this survey of a bunch of tech employees and asked, do you ever experience imposter syndrome? And according to them, 58% of the respondents said yes. Uh, you can see down on this graph here, the different places where the people had the most imposter syndrome. So Expedia, number one, I guess everyone's just kind of on edge. They're like, oh, I can't believe I'm here. Uh, and all the way down at the bottom is Apple. Does that mean the Apple engineers are self-righteous or do they just really know what they're doing? Who knows, but uh, these are the results that they had. So I think the big takeaway I got from this was that uh, you are gonna feel imposter syndrome at some point throughout your programming career, if not all the time. Uh, just know that it looks like more than half of the other programmers out there are feeling it as well. Next, the interplanetary file system. Is that not like the coolest name for a project ever? I found out about this from a post on Hacker News in which this guy is hosting his blog on the IPFS. That's the acronym for inter interplanetary file system. Basically, this is a new protocol that has been created to try and replace HTTP. Yes, I know that's a pretty bold statement right there, but the basic idea is that it's gonna be sharing files peer to peer. And the reason that this can be so secure is because whenever you're sharing a file, you can put it through a hashing algorithm, which results in a string of letters and numbers, which is a hash for that specific file. And that's what you use to ask for any given file. So someone has their blog and they say, I have a new blog post, which is X, Y, Z, blah, 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 all these numbers, right? And then you go to this file system, you ask for that specific hash, you get back a file from other people that have that file on their computer. And when you get it, you can run it through the same algorithm, check that it's the same hash and then enjoy it. So one of the key points from the website is that HTTP is really inefficient. Uh, rather than having one central server that's going to spit out a file to a bunch of different computers that ask for it, the idea is that one person could create a file, send it to someone else who's interested. And then when a third person wants that file, they can look to either one of those people and it just sort of spreads and spreads as that file gets around. Uh, they even claim that in some some cases it could save up to 60% in bandwidth costs. Uh, there's some other really cool points here. I love this title, Humanity's History is Deleted Daily. The average lifespan of a web page is 100 days. That's pretty interesting. I would have never have thought that. They also touch on this decentralizing the web and allowing access to files even when big networks go down. Next, I'm a huge fan of Product Hunt. And over the last week, this was my favorite product that I found. I believe it's pronounced Berminal. I might be butchering that, but it's basically a website that shows current cryptocurrency prices, but also has some really awesome news, sort of gives you the gist of some piece of news and you can go check out the articles behind it, but hopefully helps you realize why some coins going up or down. Really, nobody knows, but pretty interesting to look at here if you're into crypto. Next, the internet is a funny place. For whatever reason, this 2012 tweet from Lady Gaga has absolutely blown up. Uh, it's just a bunch of capital letters, exclamation point, and numbers. Who knows what the idea behind this was? But there's been some hilarious memes, and uh, I found both of these over on the subreddit Programming Humor. Love this place. Uh, first one is, I always enjoy seeing someone trying to exit Vim for the first time. Uh, if you've ever worked with Vim, it's the terminal-based text editor, and it is a nightmare, and this probably isn't too far from the truth. Next, talking about encryption and keys and hashes and all stuff. This is great here. 
And finally, the tutorial. If you've ever wanted to add HTTPS to your site, here's how you can do it for free and very quickly. So HTTPS basically means any traffic that comes between someone visiting your website and you can be encrypted. Uh, you can tell websites have HTTPS if it's in the URL and also there's tends to be some sort of lock on any given web browser. So if you don't have this on your website, uh, a lot of customers or users, whoever, will generally frown on it. So uh, to get this added to your website, it's become so much easier than it was before with this nonprofit called Let's Encrypt. So if you go to Google and just search for Let's Encrypt, uh, not only is it free now to add HTTPS to your website, but they make it incredibly simple. So there's their website, letsencrypt.org. And here, basically hit the Get Started button. I just recently added HTTPS to a website using this, so that's why I'm sharing this information. Uh, I found the easiest way to do this is with something called CertBot. So if you go ahead and click here, this takes you to another website uh, where basically you just say what sort of web server you're using. In my case, I was using Nginx. Uh, and on what system, you go ahead and pick that. And it just walks you through exactly what you need to do. Like literally just go to your terminal, terminal wherever you're hosting your site, copy and paste in each of these lines, and then run down that you wanna run CertBot. It will add HTTPS to your site. Now, the certificate that it gives you will only last for three months, but if you scroll down here, uh, you can set up auto renewal, renewal, which basically runs the above code on its own periodically to make sure that you have a current certificate ready to rock and roll. So for absolutely free and just a little bit of your time, you can make your website HTTPS. Sounds like a win. Thanks for checking out the Zappy Code Show. If you're interested in learning how to program, please check out my website, learn.zappycode.com. I'll walk you through creating your very first iPhone app, Android app, making a website with Django. It's a real hoot, come check it out. My wife just made fun of me for saying hoot. Is that weird?